trading desk jobs for corn cobs. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Blotto for MediaMonarchy.com, serving up episode 58 of some of the ways that we are winning and solutions-oriented stories. Hope you had a fantastic, safe, and sound Thanksgiving holiday and are ready for a little bit of fear-free ways that we are winning, my friends. All these stories tweeted using hashtag Good News Next Week as we are the spinoff from the long-running series. You might know me from a little thing called New World Next Week. Let's dive right into it here. With our cover story, growing number of young Americans leaving desk jobs for farms. This comes appropriately enough via the Washington Compost. And it was tweeted and shared by our good friend Kevin Cole of Tragedy and Hope. He's on the tweets at Unity of the Polis. For the second time only in the last century, the number of farmers under 35 years old is increasing according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture's latest Census of Agriculture. 69% of the surveyed young farmers had college degrees significantly higher than the general population. The number of farmers aged 25 to 34 grew 2.2% between 2007 and 2012 according to the 2014 USDA Census data, a period when other groups of farmers, except for the oldest, shrunk by double digits. In some states, such as California, Nebraska, and South Dakota, the number of beginning farmers has grown by 20% or more. Survey conducted by the National Young Farmers Coalition shows that the majority of young farmers did not grow up in agricultural families, and even better than that, they are also far more likely than the general farming population to grow organically, limit pesticide and fertilizer use, diversify their crops or animals, and be deeply involved in their local food systems via CSAs, community supported agriculture programs, and farmers markets. That is some of the best news I've heard, and actually we got to spend a little bit of time with some friends outside the city. They're friends that go back to West Virginia with us, but they've actually gotten a little bit of land about an hour outside of Spokane. Now, while there's not exactly a, a farm on it just yet, just to go out there and see the possibilities and spend a very quiet and very beautiful Thanksgiving holiday out on the land with Nothing but friends and food and animals and no other cars or houses as far as the eye can see. It's fantastic. Fantastic stuff. And I think this is very good news for our Good News Next Week, Episode 58. As we move to our second story, you ask the question, well, what kind of things are they going to grow in those farms? Magic mushrooms, of course. Magic mushroom legalization gets nod to move forward on the California ballot. This via an article by Aaron Kessel on The Natural Blaze and shared by myself, No, I didn't share this. This was shared by our friend Astro in the chat. That's the Media Monarchy chat. I'll tell you more about that at the end of this episode. Let's eat some shrimps. A bill to legalize magic mushrooms received the green light in California to move forward with gathering signatures as California's Attorney General just approved a circulating title and summary that allows organizers to gather voter endorsements as originally reported by the LA Weekly. And again, everything we say and play will, of course, be included in the show notes. You can find those links and do more research for yourself. Organizers of the California Psilocybin Legalization Initiative admit that they don't have the three million bucks it would take to get all that stuff, all those signs, all the things going. They're just doing it word of mouth. They're doing it old school signature style. They need 365, 880 valid voter signatures to be precise by April 30th of 2018. And it might appear on the ballot in California's initiated state statute on November 6th. 2018. The law, if approved by voters, would, quote, decriminalize use, possession, sale, transport, and cultivation of psilocybin by persons at least 21 years of age, end quote, according to a summary published by the Secretary of State. So that's even better than I said in the beginning. Legalization is just kind of the way for the man to get involved and to tax it all and to go from of course, prohibiting something to exploiting it. This sounds like it may be even better, and we all wish we kind of passed decriminalization cannabis laws in all our states. You know where we stand. We say decriminalize all of it. You're either a free human being who can make choices for yourself and whatever you and other consenting adults want to do or put in your body, or we're not. There's no real wiggle room in between. And of course, we've also talked about the massive benefits of psilocybin mushrooms, and we'll include those links in your show notes. As again, we've been Media Monarchy for 12 plus years and going. We got about 12,000 plus articles, posts, interviews, episodes, and more at MediaMonarchy.com. Our third and final story this week. 
heads us to Detroit with a story shared by our buddy Brock West from the land down under. Detroit builds community by building local internet. For over a year, a community-based nonprofit known as the Detroit Community Technology Project, DCTP if you're nasty, has conducted an equitable internet initiative, an EII if you're even nastier, that constructs local wireless networks to provide affordable high-speed internet to Detroit's underserved communities. Why do you have to do that? Well, of course, lots of telecom companies don't offer services because they ain't going to make no money off a bunch of poor people. So the community steps in, constructs mesh wireless net technology. We've talked about mesh networks years and years back on your New World Next Week episodes. Interconnected wireless routers enabling residents without internet services to form their own local network with a shared internet connection. Given DCTP had already been training stewards in numerous Detroit communities for the last five years, the local tech leaders are now equipped to construct and manage their own wireless communication infrastructure or mesh networks. They identify and build upon already existing digital and social resources within neighborhoods such as local businesses, churches, computer centers, community organizing hubs to organize and sustain these networks. And yes, you should be thinking of lots of metaphorical ways in these connections that we're talking about. Again, as we mostly want to talk about the power of ideas on Good News next week and say that it's never about the person or the thing or the company. It's about the open source use of ideas that just spreads this all around the world. The program has trained more than 25 leaders in Detroit and its efforts include the ongoing maintenance of the Casco.co mesh network in Detroit's Cass Corridor, which reminds me of my lovely wife, Cassie Cohn, who helps bring Media Monarchy to you because she supports me. We sometimes joke that Media Monarchy is a subsidiary of Casco. But really, Media Monarchy is a subsidiary of you, and we are 12 plus years and going strong, independent, non-commercial alternative, and I'd like to add fear-free media. We might talk about scary music and scary news and scary weird stuff sometimes, but it's never in a way to, I think, scare you. Scare you into doing something. Scare you into spending dollars. Scare you into giving me money, and I'll give you all the answers. Guess what? I ain't got the answers. But the more we work together, the more answers we get. So I stream by myself Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Pacific time at MediaMonarchy.com slash listen. You click that link, it should open up your iTunes, your VLC, your Windows Media Player, your Winamp, what have you. We do that eight hours a day. Each day of the week focuses in on a different area of the news. Monday's world news, Tuesday's technology, Wednesday's food, Thursday's weird, and Friday. We look at the entertainment industrial complex. We also play the latest episodes from Corporate Report, not only just our New World Next Week episodes, but also some of his interviews and podcast episodes as well. Breaking news as it occurs, and of course, the secret weapon of the media monarchy kingdom, tons of amazing independent music, as I've been a DJ essentially for the last 22 years or something like that. We can keep it going with your support. I'd love for you to go over to MediaMonarchy.com slash support and find the best way that you can support our work monthly. A little bit of fiat currency, a little bit of cryptocurrency. we got a post office box. And the best way, I think, is Patreon.com slash MediaMonarchy. $1, $5, $10. That gets you the single, the EP, the LP level. And that gets you into the different levels that we're building in the chat over in Discord. You can listen. You can chat. You can make friends. I think bands are already forming in the chat. Recipes have been exchanged. I saw people earlier talking about one of the recipes that got exchanged that got cooked on a Thanksgiving meal. That's amazing. That's the kind of stuff that I want to do. I passionately just want to get people the ideas and things that I know they're already into. And we'll keep going. That's episode 58. I'm pretty sure I double-checked this time. Episode 58 of some of the ways that we are winning in solutions-oriented stories that we call Good News Next Week. I am James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. Thank you so much for listening and supporting our work and reminding you, as always, my friends, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. Since 2005, Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology and the occult, all remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com slash support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.